true. I almost said pulling out. Oops. But <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's start. I'm nervous, actually. Never mind, it does. Apparently, I'm stupid. Ooh. Uh, good old road trips. Full of promise and ripe with potential for adventure. Soul searching and incredible scenery. Or at least that's what you thought before the novelty wore thin. As of now, your legs are cramping up. You've exhausted your travel plate list two times over, and your stomach is begging for something to eat. On top of all that, you're pretty sure you're lost. Um, did I go backpacking? I'm sorry, I would never. I would actively never do that ever in my life. That sounds like so much work, and my legs are like two and a half feet tall, so like, I don't it would not work for me. Driving through Oregon paints Oh, no, I was driving, okay. Driving through Oregon paints a picture of trees, trees, and more trees, especially on the endless winding roads that you're taking up north. All that breaks the pattern is a sign that zips past with words that you're able to make out. Gravity Falls. Oh! Ooh. <coughs> is there an ant in my throat? The road continues on, giant redwoods looming on both sides. You find yourself anticipating something, because as you drive on, you can feel it. Something strange is bound to happen here. Ooh! Something weird. Come on, guys, it's gonna get weird. Come on, guys, it, it's gonna get weird, guys, like the song. <laughs> and that's when it happens. Your car picks up speed. I'm going to crash and die. The change came out of nowhere, and you quickly put your foot down on the brakes, but horrifyingly, the car seems to be driving on its own willpower. Oh my god! Trying to stay calm despite the panic welling in your chest, you pull the emergency brake, only to find that the car resisting keeps moving forward like something is pulling it. The car begins to rattle. The wheels screech against the country road, and you're screaming into... I would literally just, like, jump out the car. Like, you know, tuck and roll, tuck and roll. Remember in, uh... What elementary school when they taught you tuck and roll if somebody kidnaps you? They're like, I, I hope other people learned that in my school wasn't just weird. They're like, yeah, if somebody kidnaps you, you like dive out the car. Yeah, ah, oh, yes, a car crash. Ah, oh, yes. Crash. Oh, <laughs> no sound effect, just crash? Okay. Oh my god. I blacked out and I woke up in front of the mystery shack. That's awesome. There is smoke. Why is there smoke? Do I have an electric car? Why the fuck wouldn't there be smoke? You cough, fumble for the door, and manage to undo the lock just before the door is wrenched outward from your grasp. Oh! Is some handsome gentleman coming to save me? Something lands on your shoulder. A hand- Ah! Are you alright? Oh my god! It's forward! It's forward! Oh my god! Actually, you know what? Let me say this, because I got beef with Ford. Okay. You know what? Yeah, Stan messed up and pushed him into the portal. I knew, but Stan didn't know what the portal did, and also he got kicked out of his family and shunned for like what 20, 25 years. And then the only reason his brother calls him is when he needs help. Are you serious? That it was like genuinely so rude of him. And yes, I know the apocalypse was coming, but he couldn't have like invited him over beforehand to kick back also i get that he was mad at stan but not caring where your brother was for like 25 years that is crazy if he like actually like abused him in some way i would have understood but nah he was just like oh shit my brother is gone bye then like dude what oh that's why ford annoys me he gets a little extra brownie points because he's smart though and that's kind of cute and also he has a like plate in his brain and I don't know there's something very attractive about that a man stands at your open car door his hand on your shoulder leaves to tilt your head up. oh his hand on your shoulder leaves to tilt your head up and he pulls a flashlight from his coat shining it in your eyes okay a little less attractive two blinks and he lets your chin go okay you're a big strong man <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry his eyes dart over the rest of you Ooh, looking for injuries Still stunned, all you do is watch. And I was just in a car accident. What's your name? I don't know how to do his voice. It's like a freaking pirate. Arr, what be your name? Type in your name. Mm, Y'all already know what is going on here. And your pronoun. Oh! Thank you for asking my pronouns. <laughs> Never gets old. Four. I'm Stanford Pines. Ford for short. I would shake your hand, but you look shaken up enough as it is. You seem fine, as far as I can tell, but you shouldn't you should head back out there anytime soon. 
What on earth were you driving in such a hurry? Was I trying to kill myself? I doubt it, but... You open your mouth to explain when a voice calls from inside the house. <laughs> I like to do a crunkle stand voice. Hey, point, Dexter! This better not be one of your experiments again. I've had this place rebuilt too many times to... I'm just, I apologize in advance. This is not gonna be good. This voice is not gonna be good. The owner of the voice walks out of the house and stops Slawjack at the sight of your car on the side of, you're guessing, his house. You must have hit your head earlier because you could swear you're seeing double. Point of view, you don't know what in twins are. Like, what? Sweet Moss is born. You've done it this time. What? This has nothing to do with me. I was testing my magnet gun and... <gasps> it must have pulled the victim of circumstance into the house. I suppose it is entirely my fault. I'm incredibly sorry. He looks like the nerd emoji, dude. The victim of circumstance into the house. I suppose it is entirely my fault. Yeah, okay, dude. Why don't you go read a fucking math textbook? Reassure him, reassure yourself, or cry. Yeah, can I save here? This seems like I can do this later for fun. Um, I'll reassure him. It's okay, bro. I'm sure of why you're reassuring this mystery man who just wrecked your car. You give him an awkward shrug. Um... It's all right? No, I must have done something wrong. The wire mixed up, perhaps, or the potentiometer? Okay. They're talking about your other mistake, Sixer. Oh, right. Uh, hey, look, it's fine, all right? Sure, there's a dent in the hood from the shack signage, but... And a crack in the windshield that looks like an ominous triangle. <gasps> Oh my god, guys, Bill Cipher! Guys, Bill Cipher reference, guys! Come on, look, it's Bill Cipher! Oh my god, guys, the triangle, the Illuminati is a. Look at the fucking dollar bill, guys, it's Bill Cipher! Bill Cipher, come on! It's Bill Cipher! Yippee! But I'm sure she'll still run. You try to start up the car. It sputters, but ultimately nothing happens. Damn. You feel like crying? No! My Chevy Honda! I don't know what car I drive, man. It could have been a little clown car, and I drove into Gravity Falls on a clown car. Oh. Well, let's call a tow truck for this unfortunate soul here and forget. I'll take care of it. You're right, it is cheaper to tow it yourself. Sixer, get that magnet gun out again. <laughs> That's a little bit funny. No, Stanley, I'm going to fix this. Ha! What? <laughs> what? Ha! You fixed this mess? I figured out a few, a few alien vehicles in my time. This man cannot fix a car, are you kidding me? Nah, are you kidding me? It takes some sort of miracle worker to bring this baby back to life. And this miracle worker's on vacation. Okay, dude. That's fine. Stanley, a moment. <laughs> okay, twin huddle, whatever. Ford and Stanley turn away and you're left to your thoughts. Who could anticipate a car accident like this in the middle of a road trip? You can take care of the car, but how are you going to get home? They're on buses out here, right? So you take the bus out of here, and then... Ford clears his throat, shifting a little awkwardly in place. Seems like they finished their talk. So, there are a few options. My brother Stanley here could drive you out of town to find a place to stay for the night, or... You could stay right here. Oh! Do I get to stay in the mystery shack, little old me? I get to stay here! In this nice place! Thank you so much. Thank you, good sir. Have we all seen the thirsty art of these two? No! And I don't want to! We have some maps and information you can stay at the gift shop, and in the morning we can help you with the car. What do you say? As you're about to answer, another high-pitched voice comes from inside the house. Grunkle Stan! <laughs> <coughs> I am aware that this is Mabel, but I don't know how to do her voice. Grunkle Stan! Picture this! A whole week of- Oh my gosh! My voice can't go that high, I'm sorry. Oh my god, they compressed Mabel! They made- they shiny fight her! Oh my- she looks so shiny! Oh my god! <gasps> her sweater being- her Guys, guys, her sweater, look at her sweater, guys. It is a reference to the fact that, um, that there are two brothers here, and that they are twins, and that they overlap, because their lives overlap. And, and that is the significance of the sweater. Uncle Ford? Why is everyone automatically thinks I'm at fault? Well, this time it is my fault, but I've invited Ford to stay here. I've invited this Ford to stay here with us for the night, if she'd like. I'm sure I can fix this. I just have to figure out how. Stanley sighs. 
I can take a look. Yeah, being on vacation is pretty boring. And the old stand mobile hasn't needed a tune-up yet, so it wouldn't be too bad to work on something in the meantime. Thank you, stand mobile. I'm sure I can put something together from the gadgets I have laying around if you need any specialized tools to help you with the job. And let me introduce me. <laughs> and let me introduce myself. I'm Mabel. You can ask me anything. I pretty much know everything there is to know about this place. Wait, hold on. I haven't even said anything yet. Uh, I appreciate your offer to let me stay and to repair your car. Car. <laughs> and to repair your car. Yeah, it'll be as good as new in my hands. I mean, look at my standmobile. She's been through the ringer and who knows how many times and she's still a beaut. Points out a red car parked a distance away. You can't really see how beautiful it is at this distance, but he sounds really confident. Well, this turn of events is suspicious or fortuitous. Fortuit fortuitous? Fortu uh, fortuitous. Free repairs, free lodging. There's no better deal to be found. And if things don't work out, the town probably has some sort of auto repair shop that you can head to instead. It does! Uh, well, I accept. Thanks for the help. Can you say hi to Brazil, please? Yeah, I can. Hi, Brazil! And my apologies again. What an embarrassment. I must have made such an elementary mistake. Bro, it's okay, you fucking loser. I don't know, something, something's a little attractive about losers, man. Their house is so weird now that I really look at it, but that is okay. As the finds lead you inside the house, Mabel leaves her number in your phone for you to call whenever to find out that Ford's twin goes by Stan. This part's the house, but just the outside that door is the mystery shack. Hey, you ever been in the mystery shack? Why did he turn like New York for a second? Hey, you ever been to mystery shack before? I can't not do it! Their mom was from Jersey, so you know it makes sense. Uh, I wanted to, actually. I saw a bumper sticker while I was on the road and got curious. Interrupted by a loud try, but HA! Those bumper stickers were a good investment. And Sixer says they're too plain and gra graphically simplistic and don't have even have an address on them, Stanley. How is anyone supposed to find the place to attract customers? Sixer, did you hear that? Well, they are graphically simplistic. I don't know how she found the place, let alone thought the what is the mystery shack was, is, was compelling. I, I kind of liked it. See? She liked it. Hey, I like you, whore. How about I give you a tour sometime tomorrow? Regular price. Wow, thank you. Did my heart just skip a beat? He's gonna give me a tour? Personalized. At regular price? <laughs> wow. <laughs> tomorrow? You don't have to squeeze all my get to know you questions in today. Whore, tell me, capybara? Yes or no? Yes. At that moment, a boy passes in the hallway at the four, far, four, at the far doorway, and Ford calls out to him. Dipper, my boy! I'm surprised I didn't see you run out the scene of the crime. <laughs> they fucking compressed a dipper too. They got him now! What? A crime? What crime? I have an alibi. That is suspicious, bro. What are you talking about? Crime? What crime? I have an alibi, I swear. Oh, you have someone with you. I don't know a voice to give Dipper, so that's my bad. I can't do child voices because, like, obviously. Garley has been reading too many Wattpad fanfics. MY Wattpad DAYS ARE DONE! I left that life behind me. I left that life behind me. Stop it. No, we don't talk about that. <laughs> I have an alibi. Oh, you have someone with you. Hey, uh, I'm not suspicious at all. Dude, what? Did you guys see that car at the side of the shack, though? For a second, I thought the mandatories were back with a grudge. Uh, yes, about that dipper. Neat whore. I've, uh, stranded her car here by accident. She's staying here for the time being. Sorry, stranded her car here? You crashed it? Yeah, the yes, and shack fell on it and everything, and the windows are cracked! One window, the windshield. And whore was lucky to make it out a lot. She's fine. No injuries, thankfully. The fact the gun's rather safe, despite never having been tested in a formal setting. Um, that's suspicious. You sound like... Like, genuinely, it sounds like... He was gonna cover up my death. And I don't know if I find that attractive or not, so... Yeesh, did you, like, not take safety precautions or anything? Actually, the irony of the situation is that I was trying to install a safety precaution. Ah, ha, ha, that's funny. 
Hey, hey, if you two are gonna do your nerd talk, I'm gonna get Horse set up. Oh! Mabel, sweetie, why don't you show Horse around? Let her stay in, uh, the storage room. That's still empty, right? Oh my god, yeah, it is! The room with the carpet. I mean, they rolled up the carpet, so now it's just a regular room. I'll make it empty. Oh, okay. The rest of the day consists of Mabel showing you the storage room you'll be staying in. Then the kitchen, then the living room, and then the hallway, and the bathroom. And pretty much a comprehensive tour of the mundanities. Mundanities? Mundanity? Whatever. Of a regular house. Y'all. 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 I had the biggest crush on Dipper when I was like... I, I can't even remember how old I was. It was it was age-appropriate, though. Don't worry. It was age-appropriate because he's 13. It was, it was age-appropriate. But, um... Oh, my God. Like... And then there was this one adult fan art of him. And I was, like, in love with it. And, like, I don't even want to talk about it, man. Also, I read Dipper Goes to Taco Bell. And I should not have done that at that age. I think it, like, chemically changed my brain for the worse. Like, you know how Joker got thrown into a vat of acid and came out as the Joker? That was me, like, reading Dipper Goes to Taco Bell and then emerging as me right now. Eventually, you find out the family is even more extended than you know. The record of doilies make a lot more sense than a grandmother normally lives here. And her grandson, Zeus. Oh my god, I forgot! They live there? Was it Zeus? Whatever the name, you look forward to meeting him when he comes for work in the morning. When you go up to the attic, Mabel opens the door to reveal Dipper, nose stuck in his book. But you catch him occasionally glancing up at you as he pretends to read. Why is he being weird? Why is he being weird? What? Why are you talking about it? If you don't want to... I just thought I'd share. I'm sorry. Am I not allowed to share my silly stories? And the next member of the family snorts up at you from Mabel's bed. A road sound to Pink Pig, who Mabel declares as her best friend and partner in crime. Waddles! Oh my god, it's Waddles! Whether that Dipper, Dipper was an adorable jerk or that Wendy was a snack, all right? Nah, I knew people who thought both. I never got, like... Okay, I actually really got the hype for Wendy in Season 2. Wendy was so cool in Season 2. But, um... Like, Dipper, I definitely got the hype around Dipper because, I, I mean, that was me. But, like, yeah, I know some people who liked both. <laughs> the two are a perfect match, right down to the chubby cheeks and boopable no noses. And in the evening, though you'd still been in disbelief over the state of your car, the family dinner and after dinner TV marathon you'd been invited to made it seem like a normal guest day, rather than a forced circumstance. What are we watching, man? Cries in Spanish? Okay, boy, three, stay. Oh my god, look at my room! Returning to the storage room Mabel had shown you earlier, you find an air mattress waiting for you and more pillows and sheets than a summer night warrants. Ooh! This looks so comfy, man. The way I would like, <clears throat> like, this literally looks so comfortable. I would like dive into that bed, man. The stack of eyeballs on the shelf? Hello? Are we not going to discuss the eyeballs on the shelf? We're not going to talk about it. Cursed artifacts. Kitchen souvenir. Okay. You wake to the weak glare of sunlight streaming in through the small, high window in the wall. I can't remember your room having this kind of feature, or any hotel or motel room for that matter. And then yesterday comes crashing back to you. Can we date the, the Dorito man? I already made a Bill Cipher dating sim like years ago, man. Go check it out. You know, I'll link it in the description. Um, glance at the time to see that you've slept into the afternoon. Experiencing the accident yesterday must have left you tired out. And they didn't even like offer to take me to the hospital or anything. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in the kitchen now. Okay. Despite having been assured yesterday evening that you were free to anything in the fridge, you feel as though you're posing on the Pines family and try preparing a polite, as polite a guest breakfast as you can. Oh, like I'm making all of them breakfast or I'm making myself breakfast? Because like, if I was at somebody else's house and they were like, help yourself to anything in the fridge, I'd like eat a single cracker. <laughs> Wash your dishes in the sink before you leave. And just as you're about to exit the kitchen, you bump into Ford. Hey! Hey, poor eyes! Hey, sixer! Hey! I was like, I'll just say sexer. Okay, you know, that, that didn't happen. Okay, okay. Excuse. Oh! Ah! 
your yes from yesterday, of course. For a good solid moment, Ford regards you in awkward silence. Did he forget who I was? <laughs> okay, man, this is awkward, bro. Say something. <clears throat> I believe Stanley's taking a look at your car outside, if you want to be there for it. You give a nod and make to leave for real this time when Ford speaks up again. And, Ford, I'm sorry again for the accident. I'd been smarter about, well, let's just say it's entirely my fault. And you shouldn't worry about this at all. Oh, it's okay. I'll send you my bill. When it comes down to it, Stanley does have a knack for cars. I bet that you'll be back on the road in a matter of weeks. I, I'm staying here for weeks? I mean, okay. Weeks. You can't keep the dismay off your face. And can't really bring yourself to try either. Oh, he's gonna get all sad! What am I going to do with weeks? Ford, who'd gone kind of uncomfortable and closed off when your face fell. Covers at the prospect of a question he can answer. Oh, well, there's the town to tour, of course. And the mystery shack. But if you ask me, all that pales in comparison to... Hold on, do you hear that? Ford turns to the kitchen doorway to investigate. Okay, what are we hearing? Sounds like... Sound comes again, and this time you hear it as well. The squeal of a pig followed by a pair of quick footsteps running down the stairs. Waddle stumbles past the open kitchen doorway, and Mabel comes into view soon after. A few sheets of paper clutched in hand. Ford steps quickly out of the kitchen, and you follow up the doorway, given, getting there just in time to see the apparent tug war between Mabel and her pig over a saliva-covered sheet of paper. Wow. If some old man who let me sleep in his shed instead of driving me to the ER told me I'd be staying with him for weeks, I'd start swinging. Okay. When you word it like that, it's a little bit odd. Okay, let's, let's not word it that way. The paper rips, and after nearly toppling backwards from her efforts, Mabel recovers, snatching the scrap of ripped paper from Waddle's jaws, and lifting both pieces up victoriously. Haha, -ha, Mabel wins again! Now I just gotta find Uncle Ford! I'm, I'm doing Mabel so dirty, I feel like actually guilty. Ford, who'd run forward and held out a hand to steady this energetic child when she'd been in danger of toppling over, now finds a number of crumpled sheets of paper shoved into his hands. Mabel tugs urgently at his coat. Gungle Ford, you've got to help me! Ford kneels down to face Mabel with a serious, though concerned look. Slow down, Mabel. What's the matter? Dipper found a stack of pages from your old journals, and I walked in and wa Waddles ran up and started eating one, and he must have been chewing on it. So warn me, Grungle Ford, because look! Mabel takes the ripped halves of paper from Ford's hand and joins them together, holding it up for Ford to see. Hmm, I see. And you took it as a warning? Yes! It says here that he eats small dogs, and Waddles is a small pig, but it sort of looks like a dog from far away, and Waddles must have feared for his life! Waddles seems to second this notion with a snort. Or not, as it seems the pig is lounging adorably a short distance away in the hallway. I swear to God, Gravity Falls made me want a pig, and then I found out that they commit cannibalism, and then I was not so on board with it. Soggy socks, I once swallowed a ring and a rock at the same time. How on earth did you swallow a ring and a rock at the same time? Actually, no, I can't judge you. One time I did, like, eat glass. I can't imagine what this dangerous predator could be. Some kind of wolf? Something bigger? You're suddenly not so keen on staying anymore. Uh, remember the pterodactyl I told you? No way I just said pterodactyl. No way I just said pterodactyl, bro. Pterodactyl? You suppose pigs are allowed in museums around here? Ah! I just think it's a museum! Cause I'm me! I'm a foolish little know-nothing, zero-brain, empty-headed... I don't know. Mama? <laughs> so... <laughs> How about I finish that report? I never got around to completing. That'll keep Waddle safe from harm. Mabel flops down on the floor in relief. Uncle Ford, you are an actual lifesaver! Waddles, you have nothing to fear! Ford Chuckle is lifting himself out of the meal and standing back up. Alright, I'll go get my recipe. Hey, Ford. Ford turns to leave, and you suddenly remember that with nothing better to do for weeks, you're going to be here. It wouldn't hurt to get to know Ford. It seems to know that there is to do around town anyway, and you'll need that to not die of boredom in the first week. Or, more pressingly, you could go check on your car and see what Stan's made of it so far. You're not exactly eager to face seeing your car on the side of the house again, though. Oh god, this is already the second time I've saved. I don't know what to do though. Alright guys, which one do we do? 
know him? Okay, okay. It seems the group consensus is get to know him. Okay. <clears throat> do, do the little Eugene Fitzherbert. Eugene. What the fuck? Um, I guess Flynn Rider, like, stare like... Hi. Uh, Ford, wait. Uh, need a hand with that recipe? Why do I always do it in the Wattpad, like, YN voice? It's like I'm physically incapable of not saying it like that. I have to say it like that. The smolder. Yeah, exactly. The smolder. I wish I could pet his gray hair. Ooh. Trying to think of the worst thing I've eaten. I de like the worst thing I've definitely eaten is glass. But also one time, and I remember this, but I was like six. I moved into a new house with my parents, and I guess the like old tenants didn't clean it out super well because there were like these colorful things on the ground. And like six-year-old me, my brain is like M&Ms. And I guess I wasn't old enough to know not to eat old weird candy that you find on the floor of a completely empty house. Because little old me got on the floor and just started putting them in my mouth. And I chewed them and I ate them and I swallowed them. And I, I can't remember if they tasted like M&M's, but I remember thinking, well, they're probably M&M's. And then like thinking those were probably m&ms so i i don't know let's hope they were m&ms i guess socks that explains a lot what does that mean what no i was drinking apple juice there was dirt at the bottom of the app oh my god oh my that is like my worst nightmare jesus christ oh my god uh ford wait uh need a hand with that recipe i can handle it myself are you sure you can use a hand? Blink, 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 blink. I... Ford looks away, and you follow his averted line of sight to Mabel, who just mouths something that you couldn't catch. When she catches you looking her way, Mabel gives you a 100-watt smile, the picture of innocence. Ford rubs the back of his neck. Oh, why are you saying, like... Like, date my pops! Like, bro, what? Like, what? This... Oh, yeah, Ford has no game, actually. If you remember it... Ford has absolutely zero game. Like, if you watch the show, he got like, he literally got like, what was it, champagne or what, punch? I don't know what they drink at dances. He got it thrown on his face. Uh, yes, I suppose I can accept some help. And with that, assured that Ford is on the task, you spot Mabel rolling away with waddles into the living room. Before we get started, I suppose I should give you an introduction. Ford, tell me. Do you believe in the supernatural? So, guys, I'm gonna be super honest here. And, like, you can say I'm, like, weird or I'm stupid or whatever. But, like, to a certain extent, I do believe in the supernatural. Like, how do I... Let me explain this in a very easy way. Like, aliens, right? I don't believe there are aliens that probe people on the moon. I don't think that. However... I do think there is a form of life somewhere out there in space that is not human. Like, whether it's vegetation or it's humanoid, like, whatever it is, I think there is form out there. Form? What? Well, I think there is, like, some form of life out there. I'm gonna say, I don't not believe in ghosts. Like, if somebody told me a house was super haunted, I might, like, not go into the house, because, like, I don't, don't want to catch all of that, y'all! What? Um, but yeah, I do. Well, you're about to come face to face with the unexplainable yourself. You see, if gravity falls in some quiet, unassuming backwater town, much more lurks just below its surface. Ford pockets the crumpled journal of papers and gestures for you to join him as he walks. You do, and follow him through the living room into the gift shop. For example, you must have heard Mabel mention a pterodactyl. Most would say none exists in the living world today, but I say not if you know where to look. Oh, he's being so being edgy and mysterious and ominous, like, come on, man, okay. Ford reaches under the cashier counter and retrieves a package of vintage-looking gum, stuffing it for a moment, slipping it in his pocket. 
He looks around in thought. Hold on to my explanation for a moment. I need to retrieve some more supplies. The court ushers you at the gift shop entrance, so you find yourself outside the shack, and then shuts the door behind you. Well, damn! What did I do? Or is the option to hug him already? I don't know. Like, I want a flirt option, bro. I want to flirt with him and see how he reacts. That's what I want. Like, I feel it's personally offensive to my own rights of free speech that I can't flirt with Ford. So, turn and peer through the window. Um, I'll respect the man's privacy. You, correctly and politely, just stand up there until Ford returns. You may scan the sky for a pterodactyl while you wait. Not too long later, the door opens behind you and Ford joins you outside, looking no different than before. He must have stored whatever supplies he went to retrieve in his coat, but the trench coat falls too naturally on his figure for him to be hiding much. Y'all, I know where he put it. <laughs> ah, I know where he put it, guys. Where were we? Ah, oh, yes. Ford pulls a pen and pad from his coat, walking as he writes. He says you're about to head out. He stops and smacks his hand to his face. Oh, face palm, guys. Face palm. Oops, I didn't. Oops, guys. Oh, shoot. One second. Ford hurries back to the house. Dude, what? Realizing he forgot one important component to this adventure. A butterfly net. Before you get a chance to ask, he strides out ahead of you. Obviously, no mind to tell you what it's quite, what it's for quite yet. The pair of you walked past the shack and down a well-worn path into the trees surrounding the house, sunlight peeking between the pines. Ah, the pines, get it? He double checks. I thought it said double cheeks! Okay, 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 okay. The pair of you walk past the shack and down a well-worn path in trees surrounding the house, sunlight peeking between the pines. He double checks whatever he scribbled onto his paper and tucks it back in one of his coat's seemingly infinite pockets. He stops and turns to face you with a definitive nod. My recipe for repellent called for a sprig, sprig of lavender, two of the slices of gin, ginseng, a drop of bat blood, a chunk of amber, and 3.5 millimeters of ink. He pauses, staring down at the path and thought, Obviously, I already have all those components on hand. All except for one last ingredient, a single moth's wing. I am not tearing the wing off of a moth, are you kidding me? They're adorable, are you kidding me? From Mothman itself. Mothman! 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 You want me to, you want me to attack Mothman? What? You can't help it, you gasp. Oh, oh my goodness! Ford glances at you, and you think you see a hint of a smile before he turns back to the path and continues along. Wind ruffling through his hair. I know Ford loves being mysterious. He loves being so smart. And he loves people being like, Oh my god, Ford, you're so intelligent. It's giving YN. I am YN right now! Thank you. It's giving fight song. No, don't say that. Don't say Fight song, actually. Like, that song. Like, I don't know if it's in my genetic coding or something. But, like... That song pisses me off so bad, dude. It's not even funny. It's giving Jason this isn't you. Stop it, guys! Stop! Stop, guys! Clipboard with the face. He thought about things a bit too creatively. Stop it! You guys are so mean! Okay. You see, Mothman is a very creature on that page that Waddle seems to fear. Using a piece of itself should ward it away, or at least lead to believe that Waddle's is for eating. I have already completed the repel years ago. So one of his wings is gonna be like three feet tall, right? It's giving crying at everything. It's giving not like other girls. Stop, guy! What did I do? Oh my god, guys! Stop! I feel so attacked right now. It's giving I tried to be popular, but I could never be like like them. I'm different. Stop it, guys! What? Was it too difficult? No, I just never got around to it. Besides, Mothman used to come bad at this lamp I had lit out in the backyard. It seemed like such an innocent hobby then, but I never had the heart to chase it off. Aww. That's cute. But if it brings Mabel and her pig a piece of mind, then the time has come to finish this. Sunlight filters through the trees, causing dappled shadows across Ford's chest as he leaps in front of you. Whoa, why are you looking at his chest? He got a little... He got a little... little never mind. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna finish that. I'm not gonna finish that. He's not... Like, they're not even grandfathers, so technically it doesn't count. They're great uncles. So... I'm not a guilt lover. Maybe you guys are just too judgmental, okay? Maybe you should open your minds, alright? 
No, it's okay. Socks go for valid. Thank you. Thank you. I knew I could trust one of you. I guess I'll ask him how do you know so much about this stuff? Because he seems to like talking about himself. Not because I think he's self-obsessed or anything, but because, you know, like some people who are awkward, like socially, have an easier time talking about like themselves and what they did and relating things back to them instead of trying to talk like, I don't know about know socialism i don't know what people talk about are you kidding me um how do you know so much about this stuff i study anomalies anything unusual strange and just plain weird I began my research in this town because it was and remains a hotbed of paranormal activity i made this exact trip years ago though at the time i had no idea where i was going it was just dumb luck that i managed to tail mothman back to its cave from my backyard navigating the forest by moonlight is poetic but not advisable huh Navigating the moon forced by moonlight? What does that even mean? Maybe you should open your eyes and look at the screen. This is your man. <gasps> ah! You guys are me! I just want to go like to Fort's Oh my lord. 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 He looks like the old guy from the movie. Up. Oh, no, he doesn't. Stop it. He does not look like Carl, man. Don't, dude, they're not even near the same age. This dude's only like, how old is Grunkle Snap? 50, 60? Okay. I made plenty of other discoveries as well, from fairies to gnomes to amalgams of creatures who were never meant to cross to, ah, wait. Did you, did you were you about to say crossbreed? I'm sorry, were you about to say crossbreed? Ford reaches into his pocket and pulls out the slightly crumpled pages Mabel had pushed into his hand earlier, smoothing them out and shuffling through them. Take a look at these. They're more de than definitive proof than just my word. You accept the pages from him and find that they're scanned pages from some sort of journal, just as you've heard Mabel say. Fluid cursive tells of Mothman and Beard cur Cubs and... Beard Cubs? And Scampfires? Okay... Ford gestures to them and explains. I detailed my discoveries in a series of research journals. The remaining pages, at least. I wonder where Stanley was keeping these. Oh my god. You drew these? They were really good. You're really talented. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I keep doing Like, my brain is like, you have to. Like, I, I can't not do it. I'm sorry. Crossbreed, breed, dog, wolf, alpha, omega, wolf. Can you stop? Whatever train of thought you're on, you need to get off of it. You need to embark. Oh my god, you drew these? Barks. <laughs> you guys are ruining my life. Oh my god, you drew these? <coughs> uh, yes, of course. Who else? Um, I love your line work. I love your line work, dude. It's stellar. I've seen better? Imagine, that's so rude. God. These ink washes look so master. Yeah, I gotta I gotta appeal to his nerd dome. These ink washes are so masterfully executed. Wow. My work now is far better, but I appreciate the compliment. See? See, he lit right up. Despite his understated words, Ford looks surprisingly pleased. Oh, I get to ask him all the questions. Okay. Um... Were any of the creatures ever dangerous? Oh, extremely. Some were worse. Dangerously annoying. <laughs> Me, I'm that creature. I'm dangerously annoying. I was just doing a bunch of poses in my head, but I realized you guys couldn't see them. No Ford seems to find his own common amusing. He doesn't fail to notice your unease. I do have weapons in case things escalate, so there's no need to worry. Oh my god! When he's got the blicky on him? Ooh! You brought weapons? Not many. I have my stun gun, my fist. Okay, his fist. Okay, we see you being raw with it. And my sharp wit. Okay. Okay, you raven claw bitch. Okay, like, oh my wit, oh my wit. Oh, why'd you put on some some navy and bronze, huh? You gonna sing Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hoggy Warty, Hogwarts? Yeah, get out of here, bro. What about the creatures? Oh my god, what? It says here that Mothman turns into a bunch of moths. He does? Yes, that's how we'll get to Mothman. 
Why not use mothballs as rep- Yeah, why not use mothballs as repellent? Well, it- I've never tried. Could the most conventional method be the unconventional one? Or would Mothman be able to overcome its mothly nature and persist? Um... I guess I'll ask him more about that. Okay, I already- You mentioned gnomes? Other places have rats, mice, or insects as house pets. We have gnomes. Picture your typical garden gnome, but more disturbing. Um, will we catch sight of the pterodactyl? I doubt we'll spot it today, but perhaps we can go bird watching later if you're interested. Oh, that's really sweet, actually. Guys, I am at my fucking wit's end. I am at my fucking wit's end. Let's not do this anymore. Or I'll choke out all of you individually, and there will be nobody left except me. <laughs> I doubt we'll spot it today, but perhaps we can go bird watching later if you're interested. That's so sweet of him. Aww. About this leprechaun. <laughs> Poor groans. Wait for a further answer, but that's it. Oh! I can't remember any leprechaun episodes what i got cornflakes all over my pants oh, oh me too like literally right now except i poured them in my pants because it's yeah <laughs> you don't get to hear the end of that sentence there are floating eyeballs here sounds disconcerting doesn't it i once released them in my house by accident found eyeballs in the most unsuspecting places for months imagine you go to the bathroom like you really have to like go to the bathroom so you run and you run and you make it and you close the bathroom door behind you and you see that toilet and you just feel like relief in your mind and you pull up the toilet lid and then there is a fucking eyeball staring at you what do you do go on mute chat enjoy loneliness do you want peace quiet choose insanity or silence what the fuck what the fuck i'm scared <laughs> oh my god <laughs> was that a threat? Oh my god! I would shit on the eye. Great, okay. My guests chose not to comment on my choice of house decor. Uh, more creatures. Gravity Falls is home to giant vampire bats. Ooh, but what about the vampires? Ooh! Giant fruit bats, actually. They're among the first to teach me not to judge creatures by its reputations. I only realized they were harmless once I'd been bitten by by one. Oh no, that still sounds pretty bad. I actually healed quite fast. I attribute that to the health kick I was on soon after. Oh, health kick. So it's like healing property. Oh! You mentioned a Gremlodlin? <laughs> ah, a rare specimen that I have since steered clear of when accompanied by others. Though if you want to see one in person, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to walk into that situation again for the sake of education. Oh, For the sake of education! Uh, oh my god, I, I literally already talked about all the creatures. Um, you didn't bring your magnet gun? I thought it'd be prudent to leave its magnetic fields alone for a while until I have the time to optimize it. Okay. Push up your glasses, why don't you? You see, I was trying to widen the area of the magnetic influence, but it's been a while since I last worked with the gun. I need to re-familiarize myself with its inner workings. My guess is I switched the wrong wire to instead narrowed the beam. Uh, I'd like to see how it works sometimes. Really, you know, if you're interested in devices like that, my research colleague for Fiddleford would have more to show you. He's an engineer and genius around here. I was trying to flirt. Like, I wanted to, like, be like, ooh, ah, ah, and, like, like, I wanted to flirt with you, and then you come at me with all this nerd speak that I don't understand. So now I'm, like, having to, like, I don't know, bat my eyelashes and be like, mm -hmm, and I don't have a clue what you're saying. You must have gotten up to some pretty crazy stuff back then. That's one way to put it. It really took six years for me to get it over my head. Oh, dang, you were here for six years? Oh! It takes a silent moment to look away from your gaze, seemingly in bittersweet remembrance. Um, okay. I guess we gotta walk in silence now. Suddenly Ford puts an arm out in caution, slowing his pace. You narrowly manage not to collide into him and take a quick glance around the scene. Nothing? Look, there! See what looks like a bundled up plaid shirt moving along the forest floor. Wait, is that a beaver's tail? It looks like... A platypus! Ah, what are you doing all the way out here? Uh, 
Don't you mean a platypus? Ford shakes his head with a grin. I meant what I said. It's a plain platypus. A platypus. Ford moves into a crouch, but stays at a respectable distance, following the small creature. You watch him, and after a moment, mimic his actions. This is so cute, actually. Ford's giving the creature a bright smile. The first of its kind that you've seen since Liz may have left the shack. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's so cute! He, he likes animals! That's such a green flag! You're a cute one, aren't you? And in one of my favorite patterns, too. Ford motions for you to move forward a little to the distance he's maintaining. Ford rate the oddities that live in a forest on a scale of at least the most adorable. These little guys can get immunity. They have done nothing wrong and I appreciate them for it. Aww. As the two of you watch in quiet appreciation, the platypus ambles into the underbrush and vanishes from view. What a cute little guy. Oh, that was so cute! The two of you continue deeper into the forest. The foliage seems denser now, and you look through the treetops for a glimpse of the sun, which has by now dropped low into the sky. It had already been getting late when you left, but you hadn't thought Mothman would be this far out. Almost as though he'd read your mind, Ford answers for you. The Mothman is rather reclusive, and as such lives deeper within the forest than the bolder creatures like the gnomes. Are you alright? Huh? That is, are you tired at all? I should have asked sooner. It's just been a long time since I've traveled to anyone new. Stanley, uh, tends to speak his mind without my asking. Um... I'm fine! And so are you! I'm glad to hear it. Still, we have some time until sunset. Let's wait here in the meantime. Are, are we chilling? Uh, is this what you do for fun? Saving my niece's pet from possible danger? No, not really. I mean, what about trips like these and your research? They come with a certain thrill. I do enjoy my research. But one of my most favorite pastimes. Cooper tells me it's actually grown quite popular recently. It's like dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons. I like that that's this version's ver or this world's version of D and D. And like, yeah, D and D has gotten like I don't want to say so much more popular, but it's definitely not some like stupid nerd game anymore. It's something I feel like anyone can get into. I believe Dipper's prepared a campaign he thinks will really stump me this time. I'm incredibly excited. Oh. <laughs> The moment the sun touches the horizon through the gaps in the treetops, Ford gestures for the two of you to continue. You hadn't noticed, but you'd been resting within a short distance of a small clearing that holds a cylindrical stone marker. No, because I love D&D. &D. Oh my god, me too. I love d and I love being, like, don't get me wrong, I love being a player, but there is no feeling like being a DM, dude. Ugh, I want soup, me too. The stone marker bears intricate swirls carved into its surface. Ford reaches into his coat and produces a packet of gum from earlier, opening it and dumping the pieces out onto his palm. Gum? Uh, thanks. Not sure why you came all the way out here to unwrap gum at, some at sunset. Gum at sunset, Oh, that's so romantic. You accept a stick of gum. Ford puts the remaining gum in his coat breast pocket. Yeah, put them in your little booby pocket, man, sure. <laughs> booby pocket. He unwraps the now empty gun pack, gun pack to reveal that it was hiding a small piece of parchment, folding, folded up to act as lining. He smooths it out against the stone, folding it under the deep orange red light of the sunset. You step closer to look over Ford's shoulder. The parchment holds a detailed drawing of the swirls carved into the stone, documenting every crack on the surface. As you watch, a golden cursive unfolds itself across the page, seemingly fueled by the sunset's warm light. Ford reads the words as they appear. Such a place the Mothman doth rest, but please do not disturb his nest. His kindness be something thou prayest. Ford lifts the parchment a little higher to prevent his shadow from obscuring the rest of the line. Follow thy nature and turn left. Um. Such a place the Mothman doth rest, but please do not disturb his rest. His kindness be something thou prayest. Follow thy nature and turn left. Follow thy nature? I think you should answer this one. The answer is clearly left. Let us move, continue forwards. Left leads you to a dimly lit cave, which Ford says he remembers well. Except last time he was here, it was pitch black since he arrived in the middle of the night. From the steps, you hear the faint sound of dripping water, echoing off the cave's shadow shattered walls. 
You slow as your eyes attempt to adjust to the low light. Ford paused in front of you, reaching into his coat for something. Ooh, he's shadowed over now. Hold on, I have a flashlight in here somewhere. This cave has never received much natural light, you see, and... Hmm. You remember just further, and you see a couple dice, a pad of paper from earlier, and the quill. He has some custom pocket work going on in there, too. You bet one of his coat's inner pockets has a pen protector in it. Ah. Here we are, at last. Allow me to... Darn, it's out of battery. Oh my god, really? Oh, wait, I think I have a... Girl, why do you have a battery on you? Whatever. You pull out your phone and turn on its flashlight. Ah, smart. The light is small, but it does its job. Huh, you saved our hides there, whore. I was about to pull out a matchbook. Is, is fire your next option? Okay. With your light guiding the way, you and Ford move further into the cave, which yawns wide around you. It isn't until the sliver of natural light from the entrance disappears that Ford speaks again. It's been years since I've been here. Decades, even, at this point. And I'll always remember the eye bats one of my first discoveries when I arrived at Gravity Falls. And how did you find them in the first place? One got into my house, you see. I was making breakfast one morning when one managed to find my cereal box. When I poured the cereal into the bowl, it came fluttering out and agitated like it belonged there. The nerve! It still sounds so indignant even years later that you laugh. I wanted to contain it for further study, but unfortunately I managed to get away. As I thought about it afterwards, the people had constricted against the light, unfamiliar to the bright light in the kitchen, so either it's nocturnal or lives in the deepest, darkest cave of Gravity Falls. I found them easily after that. Uh, did you manage to catch one? Someone. I came running through the cave with this butterfly net in my wits. I brought a working flashlight that time. They all hid in dark corners. Once I turned the flashlight off, they flocked to me. Caught 18 of them that day, but it reminded me of the stealth uses of... Of what? Huh? The rapid sound of clicking claws and sto against stone startles you. A shiver running up your spine. Oh my god, protect me! The dark. Oh god. You turn off your light. Ford taps your shoulder and gestures for you to keep moving forward. Eventually, the narrow passage widens into a large room. The darkness shrouds the source of the dripping water from view, and as your eyes adjust, you squint to see a strange winged shadow, a creature with eyes that glow red and near darkness like rubies. Your breath catches in your throat as the realization comes over you. Ford is apparently fairly close to you in the room. You find when he speaks a few inches from your shoulders. You catch the shadow of his arm swinging out in a wide arc, like he's introducing you to... Or I'd like you to meet the Mothman. He whispers, but... Even in the dark, you see him grinning excitedly at you. Aww, nerd. Ford looks between you and Mothman, apparently hoping for a dramatic reaction. Your speechlessness seems to satisfy him. Well, what do you want me to do? Aw, yeah, he's real cute. Just, just a big old moth, you know? Don't worry, it hasn't noticed us yet. Here's the plan. You make the contact with Mothman, and I... He pulls out a butterfly net and a large lidded jar. Now that one came from within the coat of mysteries is lost to you. I'll capture one of the hundred moths that compromise it. Uh, I get to touch Mothman? The Mothman? Bro, that's fucking sick, dude. Yes, and it turns in a hundred black witch moths. It's like experiencing a swarm of locusts. Surprising when you're not expecting it. Things to know Ford is pretty wholesome and chill. Yeah, I thought he was gonna be like, I don't know, cringe, but he's like... Cute. Shut up, phone! The stranger that made you sleep in his shed is leading you to a cave to meet Mothman. Lots of you went outside, you went to a man so quickly. That's not true! To be fair, if somebody told me where they that they knew where Mothman was, like, I might have to go with them. I'm just being real, I might have to go with them. Remember, even a light touch is enough. You steal yourself, awaiting for the signal. He waves his hand to coax you forward, and then it's up to you to decide how to, well, make contact. Run around back to its blind spot. I'm gonna approach with stealth. You tiptoed towards the Mothman, remembering Ford's comment on the dark and trying to channel your inner stealth skills. Of course, that's the moment your phone decides to start blasting Taking Over Midnight by Anne Sandra. You confused before remembering that Mabel added her number to your contacts. You must have made that her custom ringtone. No! The man turns at the noise and screeches. Before you can barrel into it, the creature explodes into a hundred moths, fluttering around you, getting stuck in your shirt and skittering around your face, surrounding you in a mocking hell. 
This actually sounds like my worst nightmare. Oh my god. Like, they're in my shirt. Oh my god. It has to be accomplished. Ford rushes into the large swarm of moths, naming the butterfly net with a few unsuccessful swipes. He tries swatting the more aggressive ones away, but there are too many. Oh god. Oh god. Use the phone's light to attract them towards you. What? And away from Ford. Um, this one sounds smarter than run up to Ford and start swatting those monsters with your bare hands. That sounds stupid. <laughs> Grab your phone and quickly switch the light on. Run into Ford's side and holding it up high. You may attempt to call them over, despite knowing they don't respond to sound. Before long, they all crowd around the phone. The sight of light flickering and reflecting off so many wings would be somewhat captivating if you hadn't just been in the midst of them. Ford puts the butterfly net back away, and jar in hand carefully scoops one of the moths up. Well, that could have gone better, but we've succeeded nonetheless. Well, nobody got hurt, so... As Ford pockets the jar, you turn off the light. With no light and no threat to focus in on, the cloud disperses. That was amazing. Ford laughs, brushing dust and dirt off his trench coat. Ooh. You could say that. Our completed repose is within sight. Let's head back. Ford turns to leave the cave. He looks calm and content. You, on the other hand, are buzzing with energy under an adrenaline rush. Should you go for a high five? No, I should go for a kiss. Mwah. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my god, I was not expecting that. Oh my god. Raise your hand in a universally understood offer of a high five. Ford pauses, then grins, high fiving you, or rather six. Oh, he gave me a little high six. You and Ford finally reach the cave entrance. You find the forest that you left in the dying light is now awash with a silvery glow. Ooh, ideal date spot! The gap between the leaves overhead provides a view of the night sky, along with long strings of stars. Oh my god! Oh my god, I love the stars! Oh! A few more steps and the Milky Way comes into view, looking as if a tear across the fabric of the sky. Oh! Ford notices you looking. See something? A pterodactyl doesn't usually come out this late, but being a prehistoric creature, its behavior is rather unpredictable. I've never seen the Milky Way in person before. It looks amazing. Isn't it? It's remarkable what you can see without light pollution from the city. Here on the outskirts of town, you can see a good portion of the Milky Way every night. Uh, you will stare up at the sky in a comfortable silence for a few more moments. The quiet of the forest settles in along with the assistant sound of flowing water, and you find yourself surprisingly glad that Ford had accidentally pulled you here. And this is one of the moments you get to experience. Oh my god! This is so cute! This is so romantic! Out of the corner of your eye, you swear you see Ford looking at you instead of up! When you tilt your head back down, his attention is elsewhere. Oh my god! I'm blushing! Eventually, the two of you come to a wordless mutual agreement to continue on. And you're walking again. Um, you'll have to show me the other creatures that live here sometime. Glad you said so when you look over and find that Ford looks pleasantly surprised to hear it. His chest puffs out with pride. Of course, Ava will even get to spot the hide behind or tag along with Nipper when he next visits the multi bear. The what? Ford taps his temple, grinning. You'll have to wait until I show you to find out. Oh! <laughs> holding you to that. We have some time left before we get back if you're up for another walk. You must make a face because Ford looks back to you and laughs. We're not far, I promise. I just thought I might answer a few of your questions if you have any. I do have questions, okay? <laughs> so I don't know the way he's like looking at me, man. Um, I do have some questions. <laughs> I was gonna say how big is it? Okay, okay, let's move on, let's move on. Let's, let's, let's move on. <gasps> <laughs> you must stay in great shape if you do this all day. Oh my god, why is the first thing you bring up is- Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, you know, actually, this sort of thing isn't part of my exercise regime. Four turns left at the stone marker towards the sound of the river, and sure enough, after a while, it comes into view. The moonlight illuminates the water as you walk along it. That's so pretty! After following the river for quite a few minutes, the shoreline expands into a small round lake in the center of a clearing. Overhanging it is a large flat rock, 
pen that can be used as a less than effective diving board in times of emergency. The emergency being that one just had to jump into the lake. However, neither yourself nor Ford really look in the direction of the diving board. They lead you towards the edge of the lake, a relatively flat boulder could substitute for a bench, and the two of you take a seat. Oh! Oh my god! Break the silence, yes! Didn't I ask about this already? Uh, you said to wait, but can I at least get a preview of what I've been getting into? Not content to learn to discover them yourself, hmm? Well, has anyone told you about the Gobble Wander? <laughs> gobble Wander, man, okay. You snore, taken aback by the name, but compose yourself as Ford simply raises an eyebrow. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Not even in the tourist guide? Does the office even read my letters? Ford mutters to himself about updating the tourist guide to warn against local dangers. He sighs with a frustration that's reserved for bureaucracy. The scene lines up at the prospect of getting to introduce you to another strange creature. Well, the Gobble Wonker is a large sea creature that lives in this very lake. Some could say it's our version of the Loch Ness Monster. My old research assistant apparently saw it at some point. He said it was large, gray, and scaly with a long neck like a giraffe. You wouldn't have any odd sightings yet, have you? It's only been 24 hours, but my own first encounter with the strange occurred shortly after my first arrival as well. Um... <gasps> last night. Um, it's a little bit silly, but I felt a little unsettled last night before I went to bed. Almost like I was being watched out in the hallway. Ah, oh, that must be our unwanted guest, the decapitated head of Blacksburg earlier. <laughs> what the f- <laughs> Just try to ignore it. We haven't been able to fish him out yet. Okay. Um. What's up with your family? So, uh, what is Mabel like? In short, of course to be reckoned with. She radiates charm and positivity and has depths of determination I can only guess at. You'll find out for yourself, most likely. It's hard not to wake up one day and find yourself her friend. Perhaps you already are. He was his finger spookily in the air and you laugh. Okay. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's a little fruity of him, but okay. <laughs> I don't doubt it. So, what is Dipper like? Dipper is very intelligent. In many ways, he reminds me of, well, myself. Last summer, he found the research journals I mentioned instead of overlooking them, made some impressive contributions of his own. He has since started his own journal, and I look forward to see where life will take him. He's made me prouder than I can say. Aww. Uh, who is Seuss? Aw, the handyman, Seuss. He's, well, I'm not sure what he does exactly, but Stan gave him the rights to conduct his business with the shack, so he spends his day giving out tours, selling merchandise, fooling the townsfolk, giving no refunds, and the like. I may not have been around during the original Mystery Shack very often while Stan was still running it, but I believe Seuss is doing the brand name good. Uh, what's Stan like? Stubborn, foolhardy, a liar, and a cheapskate. And I love him! But a true hero at heart. Oh! There's no one else I'd rather call my brother. This is so not canon, because, like, they kind of hate each other, but okay. Um, so what's the Mystery Shack? Uh, yes, the Mystery Shack used to be my house once upon a time, and now it's a tourist trap. <laughs> Glad that's what it's become as my home. I just wish it weren't so offending to each of the senses. <laughs> um, so, uh, like, uh, are you really okay with me staying here? Absolutely. I had always for you, after all. You helping me today, however, was not part of the plan. You're making it rather hard to settle my debt. I think you did me a favor just by letting me come along today. That was cool as fuck. The two of you share a smile. Oh, oh my god, the stars are so beautiful. You ask Ford if he has a favorite constellation, and his answer comes faster than you expected. Orion and Ursa Major, without a doubt. What about you? <gasps> I like the stars in general. Oh my god, so true. I love the stars. I like the stars in general. I thought about Major in um, astrophysics. I didn't, but yeah. So, in a sense, they're all your favorite. Yeah! Ford looks at across the lake and thought, or I have to admit it, I didn't want to take you with me earlier today. I thought I'd be walking myself into a most comfortable social situation. Oh my god, he's socially awkward. So did you, to be honest. And you did well out there. How many tourists could handle this kind of task we just completed? This had the potential rate to have gone disastrously. I mean, a butterfly net. 
against Mothman, he's only 3% success rate. Sometimes, the more Ford speaks, the less reassured you feel, until all that's left is a distant unease. We smile and nod anyway. We should head back now. I'm sure maybe we'll want to hear we've been successful. We stand and give Ford a hand up from the makeshift bench. Ford takes the lead again, and soon you're no longer able to push aside a bullet when he drives back. Ford gradually adjusts his pace to yours, walking side by side with him in companionable silence all the way back to the shack. Almost there. You recognize from the incredibly flashy signs toting phrases like Mystery Shack this way and Sasquatch to your left that you are extremely close to arriving back at the shack. Oh my god, and we didn't get to kiss? What the hell? I got robbed, man. I mean, the game was zero dollars, but still, I got robbed. As you and Ford leave the tree line, you see the bright light shining on the porch. You make out the faint outline of the kids' shadows as they run through the house and emerge in the attic window. Mabel pushes it open, leading out. Uncle Ford, finally! You guys took so long, I had time to cover waddles and macaroni. Why would you do that? I have my reasons. Did you get the thing? Yes, and I'm coming inside so we can stop shouting. Ford, come along. We've got a pig to save. Ford strides into the shack, a man on a mission. You run and follow, but not before taking one last look at the night sky. Yeah, maybe your stay won't be too bad after all. Back inside the shack, the grand conclusion to your expedition to the Mothman's cave is spritzing Mabel's pig with a newly finished deterrent until the poor piglet reeks of lavender. You see Mabel and Dipper head up to bed looking sleepier than usual as a result. Something about lavender is so soothing to the senses that you crash out fairly soon afterwards, face first on your makeshift bed. Why do you want to kiss the spam? Don't call him that! <gasps> oh my god, that's so cute! Oh my god, what? Alright, and... That is the end for now. That is the end for now. Apparently this game is long. Have a, have a good uh, morning, uh, night, afternoon, evening, twilight, dusk, dawn, sunrise, sunset, whatever time it is. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye, you shameful son. What the fuck did I do? <laughs> Are you one of the only things that entertains me? Why am I thin? Okay. Bye, guys. Have a good one.